My honourable colleague, um, honourable Minister for Youth and Sports, honourable Lace Senia Tumbo, um, Christina, you and your team, uh, the DFED team from the Australian High Commission, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Easton, the medical team from uh, Nassau Health Centre, senior government officials, I believe the Minister of Women um, uh, team is also here for the REACH project, uh, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, media partners, um, village elders, children, uh, Nisambula Vinaka, and a very good morning to you all. I was here last year, I remember one year ago in October, I was here to celebrate um, the annual awards day for Koro High School and also to celebrate um, the Fiji Day. And today, as we traveled across after arriving this morning, it was indeed very pleasing to see how Koro has changed over the years. In one year, that so much changes has happened. And I think for that, on behalf of the government, I'd like to thank you for the changes that we've seen, for the spirit that we have seen in you people. It's this never giving up spirit. Um, there, there's this talk about T.C. Winston. We can, we can all talk about T.C. Winston, but only you know what you went through, what uh, traumatic experiences the whole island went through and where we have arrived today. And, um, uh, and, and, and I think we, we need to thank everybody who made lives very easy for you. And one of our partners was the Australian government. So ladies and gentlemen, can I ask us to put our hands together and thank the Australian government. For, for, the, for the support that was rendered during um, uh, times of T.C. Winston. So like I said, it's indeed a blessing for me and uh, my honourable colleague and members of uh, the government to be here this morning for the um, groundbreaking ceremony of the, uh, the, the health centre and also for us to, like I said, to see the changes that had happened. Because we live in the city, uh, we live in the mainland, we hear about what's happening, but coming and witnessing being with you, hearing things from you is indeed a blessing for us. And I think Christmas has indeed come early for the island, islanders of Koro. And um, it's, it's really wonderful to see the lush greenery. The first thing I said, I see some nice purples on the tree. Now that is a symbol that your food supplies are getting back to normal. Healthy food. Um, when we were driving across, we saw smiling children bathing in the river, enjoying their, enjoying their holidays. These are wonderful signs. And... Um, your community here in Koro and the journey, like I said, you have all been through since those dreadful days in February 2016, is a perfect example of the strength that you have, the resilience that, we, that you have. And I think we Fijians are known to be very resilient. We never give up. And you are a good example of how people don't give up. We have to, we have to move on facing the challenges that come in our life. And I'm honored that you have welcomed me and my colleagues uh, with the traditional uh, ceremony and uh, as we gather to uh, mark another milestone in uh, your uh, island's post-Winston recovery for the groundbreaking uh, ceremony and construction of a new clinic building here for, for you all. As mentioned by Christina, this project we are launching here today is part of the Australian government's program of aid and their support to Fiji in addressing physical, uh, significant physical damage caused by T.C. Winston. The aim here is to build an extension of 102 square metre clinic building alongside our current health centre, which will provide additional areas for patients with a dedicated delivery room for new mothers. With memories of Winston still in our minds, it is important that, we no that the new building be built, again as mentioned, to withstand Category 5 cyclone winds. Let us pray that we never have another cyclone like this in Winston. Let us pray that our people do not ever go through what they went through T.C. Winston and after T.C. Winston. And like it's mentioned, if need be arises, the clinic will provide shelter to the people here uh, uh, during cyclones or any other disaster events. I mean, I'm sure you'll agree with me that we cannot fight the forces of nature, but we must always be prepared for cyclones and other natural disasters. And that is why it is so important for us to build buildings as strong as possible. But we also need to plan and prepare. And that is why the Ministry of Health and Medical Services has a well-resourced disaster management unit that focuses on supporting communities to plan for health impacts of disasters and to ensure that if we are struck by such disasters, impacts are minimized should the worst occur. 
I'm sure you're all aware that uh, Fiji is working at a global level to lead the fight against climate change, which we know is driving disruptions to established weather patterns around the world. Our Prime Minister's presidency of COP23, which will last through until late next year, provides us with a unique opportunity to shape the agenda and maintain the pressure on global communities to focus on issues which will determine the quality of life enjoyed by our children, our grandchildren, and the generations to follow. We are also engaging with our colleagues in the World Health Organization to focus attention on the health impacts of climate change, which go beyond the effects of natural disasters, such as T.C. Winston, to include increased risks of mosquito-borne diseases, loss of clean water sources, and threats to crops, livestock, and food supplies, which you all went through after uh, uh, post, sorry, post T.C. Winston. And I'm sure you will recall that one of Australia's largest naval vessels, Hamas Canberra, was anchored off Coro for almost one month after T.C. Winston. The troops on board played a key role in meeting immediate shelter needs for you, restoring water supplies, uh, cleaning debris, and making preliminary re uh, repairs to school and health facilities, for which we are indeed thankful. In addition, Australia supplied shelter kits, tarpaulins, water and sanitation kits, as well as hygiene kits, which were distributed to your people during the humanitarian response, as well as funding for UNICEF to establish temporary learning spaces in schools uh, for our children and also to deliver materials for the, for the children of Goro. Now that support, ladies and gentlemen, has, from Australia has continued. It has not stopped. And not just in the field of health, as we see today, but also other construction projects. I was very much impressed to see the progress of Koro High School. Um, indeed, the building that is coming up is, is one of its kind. Um, so, Australia also has other construction projects, repairs and reconstruction of six schools, the new Red Cross building that have been underway here on the island for several months. Today, we, we're going to uh, witness um, the groundbreaking ceremony of the clinic extensions here at Nassau. And of course, that is indeed a great asset for the Koro community. And I'm sure, once again, you will want to join me in thanking the Australian government and its Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade for the generosity. Thank you. And it is indeed great to see... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is great to see new buildings appearing as Koro continues its recovery from the ravages of T.C. Winston. You are still in a rebuilding process like the rest of the country. But I know that the physical recovery is only part of the story. I'm sure that for many of you, the memories of T.C. Winston is still troubling you. And that is why it is important for you to know that the rest of Fiji, led by the government of the day in which I serve, stands beside you and is committed to supporting you uh, recover for the long term. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to uh, conclude by thanking and acknowledging the spirit of the people of Koro, led by your leaders and elders, which has helped you through some of the most challenging times that one can imagine. I am pleased that with Australia's support, you will soon have access to larger, more modern and better equipped health centre, which will be an asset to the community for many, many years to come. I look forward to seeing the building finished. And Christina, we can come back and open the building. Um, and, and meeting uh, the staff and patients at the centre on my next visit. I'd also like to place on record my appreciation for the staff of the, of the facility, the nurses and the doctors for rendering the much needed support uh, to the people of Koro. Thank you. We don't get thanks. Uh, many times we, we do not get thanks from the public, but I would like to place this on record that our staff, our dedicated staff, nurses and doctors, wherever they are, they continue to work through challenging times to provide the much needed support. And I'm sure the same uh, services is rendered to the people of Koro. So thank you, staff. And uh, with these words, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure the, the, uh, the, the, the island is gearing up for the Christmas carols tonight. And like I said, Christmas has come early uh, to, to Coral Island. So on behalf of my team, the Permanent Secretary, uh, my minister colleagues, and all the government officials here, may I wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. And let's hope and pray that the year 2018 brings us much joy and blessings. So thank you very much. <laughs>